Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord, the Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Did that catch you as a wake up? Let's try that again. Or you're all ready for our service this morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And so as we celebrate together in our homes and as I am in the church with these two wonderful ladies, we're aware that the, the church is not in the church, but the church is where it needs to be in the world. I hope your table is ready. I hope you've got your candle ready because one of the first things we're going to do now is move across and we're going to light our Easter candle. And so won't you get ready to do that yourselves as I get myself ready. Remember that the Easter candle is a reminder of Christ who is the light of the world. And into darkness that light comes. If you look at it, not only does it have the cross, but it has the year today. Jesus is relevant today, now in our lives. He is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. We're now going to put these little blocks of incense in to remind us of his death for us on the cross. His wounds in his hands. The crown of thorns on his head. The nail through his feet. And finally, the sword that pierced his side. And now as I light the candle, may the light of Christ rising in glory dispel any darkness in our lives, in our homes, in our hearts. Friends, Christ our light. Thanks be to God. Now as I move this to its normal position on the stand, won't you light your candles? Have you had a chance to light your candles? I'll give you one more moment and then we're going to pray the prayer together which will come up on your screen but it is also in your service sheet. So let's pray together. Um, Lord Jesus, what you did for us on the cross broke up the darkness of hatred and sin. Accept this candle and our candles at home and let the light of your truth guide us into your kingdom. Inflame our hearts with your grace. Keep us in the radiance of your truth. Fill our hearts with your love. Fill our minds your peace. Fill this world with your healing power. Let the light of this candle go out into the world as a symbol of your compassion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We join together in that ancient hymn of praise, the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. As we go into a time of penitence and confession, we are invited on this Easter Sunday to renew our faith commitment to God. And so before we confess together, I ask you, 
Do you turn in faith to Christ? I do. Do you then renounce all evil? I do, with God's help. Will you obey and serve Christ? I will, with God's help. And so maybe just in quiet reflect on those three promises that you have made. We reflect too on anything else we need to confess before our confession together. Let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought, word and deed and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon our sins, and set us free from them. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue in prayer as we join together in the collect for today. We pray together. Lord of all life and power, through the mighty resurrection of your Son, you overcame the old order of sin and death and made all things new in him. Grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honor, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Please get ready for our two readings. The reading is taken from Acts 10, 34 to 43. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him. Everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness and sins through his name. Here ends the lesson. The Lord be with you and also with you. Our gospel reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, beginning to read from verse 1. Early on Sunday morning, as a new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and said on him, His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The gods shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the women, Don't be afraid. He said, I know you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead, just as he had said would happen. Come, see where his body was lying. And now, go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. 
And as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them, and they ran to him, grasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Earlier in a time of confession, we renewed some of our commitment to God. And we continue that now instead of our creed as we renew our baptismal promises. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, the creator of heaven and earth? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his son, Jesus Christ, to redeem the world? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? With the help of God, I will. Will you seek and serve Christ in all people? Loving your neighbor as yourself. With the help of God, I will. Will you acknowledge Christ's authority over human society by praying for the world and its leaders, by defending the weak, and by seeking peace and justice? With the help of God, I will. And so may the Lord bless you as you have renewed your promises to continue to be faithful to him. Let's relax now and reflect on the words that I believe God has given for us today. So be ready now for my sermon. What are you fearful of at the moment? What are you anxious about? Fear is a reaction to an immediate threat. Anxiety is a reaction to a potential threat in the future. Have a look at this little picture. You see the shark, the immediate threat, and the potential threat of anxiety. Many of us have fear now because of the immediate threat of the COVID-19 virus. Many of us have anxiety because we're not sure what the future holds like, looks like for our family, for our work situation, economic environment, our country and the world. The recent extension of our lockdown will increase both levels of fear and anxiety. But why am I talking about fear and anxiety? Because that is what we find in those early hours of the first Easter Sunday morning. Not a lot of praising and worshipping and hallelujah proclaiming about the resurrection of Jesus. No, fear and anxiety dominate. Where are the disciples? They are huddled in fear behind locked doors. Fear of the immediate threat that they too may be arrested by Roman soldiers anxious about the future. The whole reason for their last three years of their life was living to follow Jesus. And now he was dead. What were they going to do? What was going to happen? Our reading today had two fearful groups, the Roman soldiers and the two Marys. The Roman soldiers hardened guards of Pilate's elite we read that when the earthquake rolled away and the angel arrived, I quote, the guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. Paralysis is a symptom of severe fear and shock. And the two Marys, they became fearful when they arrived to anoint Jesus' dead body and found the tomb open. And empty. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. 
Do not be afraid. There's no immediate danger or crisis that you need to respond to with fear. It seems to me that the standard greeting of angels always has to start with, do not be afraid. To Mary, to Joseph, to the shepherds in the fields. But I suppose if I met an angel, he would have to say that to me as well. Do not be afraid. Angel or not, the message for us today, friends, this Resurrection Day, this Easter Sunday, 2020, in the midst of the COVID pandemic, do not be afraid. The angel then explains why they need not be fearful. I read, do not be afraid, for I know that you're looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He's not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. The angel explains and gives details about what the new reality is in a way that should begin to free them from fear. The tomb is empty. But that is okay. Come and look. In fact, that's what it's meant to be. Empty. Jesus, who you're looking for, is alive. And you will soon see him. So go and tell his disciples, and together you will meet him in your normal place in Galilee. These words should have calmed their fear. But I'm sure they were still very confused and stumbled away with mixture of fear subsiding and joy rising. But the passage has another do not fear command. This is in fact is one given by Jesus himself. As the Marys wander away from the empty tomb, full of conflicting emotions, they bump into Jesus. We read, So the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy. And ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet and worshipped him. And then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go, tell my brothers to go to Galilee and they will see me. Now they were afraid again, but probably a fear of amazement, of wonder, of awe. I can easily visualize them falling at Jesus' feet, grasping them, and mumbling all sorts of words out of their mouths. Jesus says the same things they heard from the angel. Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Do not be afraid, Jesus says. I'm here with you now. But tell my brothers also to not be afraid. To meet me in my normal place, our usual place in Galilee. There they will see me. The angel and Jesus attended to their anxiety by giving them a clear picture of the future. And Jesus is included in that picture. So friends, who has the authority to say, do not fear? Does the president of a country have that? I think not. Do doctors have it? I think not. Do pastors and priests have it? Most definitely not. None of us have the authority to say, do not be afraid. Only God, or one of God's angels, has that authority. But when God says, do not be afraid, this is not some assurance that nothing can or will never go wrong. It is not an assurance that everything will turn out for your best. Rather, it is an assurance that whatever may happen to you, whatever a day might hold, God has the power to strengthen you, to uphold you, and to be there with you. Whatever we face, we do not face it alone. Whatever we encounter, is, it is in the strength of of Christ's love. And that's what we understand today. 
The resurrection tells us that love conquers even death. Because God's love ultimately gets the last word in the end. And sometimes, even before the end, God's love is triumphant. Think about it. God's love brought Jesus back to earth. God's love took Jesus to the cross. God's love brought Jesus back to life. Our celebration today. And if we trust in him, God's love brings us back to life as well. Even here, even now. What did Jesus say? I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live even though they die. Friends, if you have fears today, if you have any anxious thoughts, then hear the words of Jesus for you today. Do not be afraid. These times may be confusing, and I, Jesus, may not appear to be here, but I am not dead or defeated. I am alive and real today and will be with you. Do your normal things. Go to your normal places and you will see me there. I will be found by you. One of the problems of the lockdown is that we can't do normal things. We can't go to our normal place. For most of us, our normal place for worship, to focus on Jesus and feel closer to him, is in our church. St. Martin's, 12 Telsey Drive, with our family, our community. While we do know that God is everywhere, we all have certain places and where people feel more connected. And they're more important for us in our journey. And so it's normal to feel a bit disconnected at this time. I do. I'm standing here echoing around this empty church without you. It feels disconnected. But this is only for a time, a period of time, and that period of time need not be wasted. What I mean by this is we need, during lockdown, to create new normal places to be with God, to meet with Jesus. And our home should provide this for us. I know that many of you have a routine in your daily life to read the Bible, to spend time in reflection and prayer. And you have a place in your home that you normally do that from. But some of you don't. And so the encouragement at this season is to make for yourself in your home a special place. A place where you can go and meet with God and sit at Jesus' feet and listen to his voice and connect with his heartbeat, loving you. This is a wonderful opportunity and a challenge for us all. So what happens? The disciples do go to Galilee and meet with Jesus in their normal place on the mountain. This is how Matthew records it. Listen carefully. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. Yes, we journey forth with our doubts, with our fears and anxiety. But we can, in confidence, hand these to Jesus and worship him. The resurrection changes everything. So what is our COVID-19 message? Our message for you is simple. Do not fear in the now of this pandemic. Do not be anxious about the future. No matter what, God in Christ will strengthen and enable you to face it with him. In fact, Matthew ends his gospel and this chapter with these wonderful words of Jesus. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Amen. I'm going to end there today, but I will be sharing some more ideas on resurrection in my voice notes in some of the days ahead. So do listen out for those. We're going to move into a time of prayer now, and Bully is going to lead us in our prayer. Let us pray. 
Almighty God and merciful Father, we give you a hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless you for our creation and preservation and for all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your love in redeeming the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. Give us a due sense of your mercy that our hearts may be thankful and that we may praise you, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, we're now going to share together the peace. You may want to stand, you may want to get in a position where you can share the peace one to another. I'm sure in the confines of your home you could hold that, you could shake hands or hug or whatever is appropriate for you. We begin by remembering these words. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God through his death on the cross and his resurrection which we celebrate today. And so we are a new people, and in his name we share his peace. So may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with, with you. you. Peace of the Lord with you. Peace the Lord with you, Vicky. Peace, peace with, with you. <laughs> How was that? Won't you now settle down? We're going to move into our time of communion. So you may want to sit so that you and the communion table that you set up are in appropriate places together. Is your communion table ready? So I'm just going to take the veil off mine. The color is white because it's a celebration today. I have my big communion wafer on this pattern. We have already put wine into our chalice. I hope your wine is already poured and that your bread uh, or uh, something appropriate is ready to use. You can follow in your booklets or the words will come up on the screen as well. Jesus is risen. Jesus is here. His Spirit is with us. Friends, lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Your Spirit is fire within us. Your breath is power to purge our sin and warm our hearts to love. As children of your redeeming purpose, freed by Christ, whose resurrection opens the gate of life, we offer you our praise, with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, singing songs of your unending joy. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And now we give you thanks, because in his victory over the grave, a new age has dawned. The long reign of sin is ended. A broken world is being renewed, and humanity is once again made whole. Make holy, therefore, this bread and this wine, both here on this table and in our homes. We pray by, that you would send down your Holy Spirit upon them, like dew fall, that they may be to each of us his body and his blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. We remember on the night before he was betrayed and crucified, Jesus took bread and giving thanks, blessed it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body which is given up for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In a similar way, when the cup was end, supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Amen. And so we proclaim together the mystery of our faith. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. And so let us pray. As we pray, we are going to pray the prayer that Jesus himself taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Friends, the bread which we break, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. And so I invite you to draw near to one another, to receive the body of Christ, that you might become that body in the world. To receive the blood of Christ, that you might live out that life in the world. You may want to, if you're a big group, pause the video at this point as you distribute communion to one another. Kathy and Vicky are going to come up and receive from me. The body of Christ, risen from the dead for you. Amen. The body of our risen Lord, proclaiming hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. His mercy, His mercy endures, endures forever. forever. Friends, thank you. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope the novelty of it didn't distract you from the centrality of the truth that we have met with Jesus, our risen Lord, that we have eaten the last supper with him, and that his body and blood flowing in us has given us resurrection life. And so we need to live that out. We move now into our final prayer together as we commit ourselves and dedicate ourselves to our Lord. Let us pray. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord, send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And so may the blessing of the risen Christ be among you and remain with you. May you know God the Father as your Father. May you know Jesus as your Saviour, as your friend. May you know the Holy Spirit living in you, empowering and equipping you. The blessing of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always.
Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Christ, amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Friends, before you go, do spend some time in worship. On your service sheet, there's some links to some wonderful hymns, old and new, depending on your preference. Spend time singing praises to God in worship. Thank you for joining us and have a happy, happy Easter.